Thank you, thank you. All right. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, as he, I was already introduced, my name is Pedro Gomez, founder and CEO of WallConnect. And I'll be talking about Web3 interoperability, but most important, how we're going to go from a world where we're not just connecting Web3, but we're also communicating in Web3. And to start with, we'll start with the problem. What has kind of brought Wallet Connect into existence? We essentially have to ask the question, how do you enable connection in a space that's so fragmented by design? It's one of the biggest problems with decentralization and permissionless net, uh, networks. Essentially, anyone can build in any way, and we essentially have to kind of standardize and build a much more united design. And that essentially is the definition of interoperability. So what are the interoperability challenges that we have? First, we have thousands of wallets and thousands of apps. And these wallets and apps all work slightly different, and they all will have an opinion on how to actually function. But then all of these wallets want to talk to all of the apps, and all of the apps want to talk to all of the wallets. So how do you actually find a common standard to actually connect wallets and apps? The second one is some people are more desktop users, some people are more mobile users. And some people are a little bit of hybrid. Sometimes they use desktop and mobile at the same time. And with this challenge, we're not talking just about whether you're talking between a wallet or a dApp, but which platform do you use? Do you use iOS? Do you use Android? Do you use desktop on Mac or Windows or Linux? That's a huge interoperability challenge that it is even harder than wallets and apps. And then finally, we have chains. There's so many chains out there. Like, uh, when I started Wallet Connect, I started creating a list that's called the Ethereum lists of EVM chains, and there were like 20, 40. And now the list is like almost 1,000. Like, that's just chains alone for EVM. But what if you want to go beyond EVM? What if you want to go into like Solana and Celo and Avalanche, but not the C chain, like into other Avalanche chains? it gets even more complicated. So now we have to fix interoperability between wallets and apps, desktop and mobile, and different chains. Because some wallets might care about chains that you don't care, and the apps care about other chains, and they need to find a consensus. So with Wallet Connect, we have a protocol that enables two parties to connect. That's like the easiest way to explain it. Like, no matter if it's a wallet, a dApp, a desktop or mobile, a chain, or another chain, Two parties want to connect with each other, and we need to essentially allow this interoperability to be both secure, and because we use end-to-end -end encryption, trustless, that you don't have to trust us, you don't have to trust anyone, it has to be decentralized by design. Open source, that's quite an easy one, like Wallet Connect has started as an open source project, it is an open source project today, and it, even with the over 30 people working on it, we do everything open source. And the new challenge that we've kind of tackled is how to be chain agnostic. In, EV, in V1, the first version that was launched in 2018, we only used EVM. That was the only, the only blockchain interface that we supported. And we only did the very simple thing, which is display the QR code that the wallet could scan, and then you would connect the wallet, and then you would be able to sign transactions. Eventually, in 2019, we even allowed deep links and you could connect like a mobile app to a mobile wallet through the deep link, and no longer you needed the QR code. But it was small steps, still trying to fix the same problem of connecting a wallet to a dApp from two devices or the same device, either through a QR code or a deep link. So what does Wallet Connect, where did that take us? Like in 2018, we only had like two wallets and two dApps. Soon after, a lot of people supported us, and we had Companies like Gnosis Safe writing SDKs for Android and Trust Wallet writing SDKs for iOS. And then we had like more and more wallets and apps. And then we had like MetaMask. And then we had like Pillar Wallet. And then we had like Argent and Alpha Wallet. We had so many wallets coming into place. And the more wallets adopted, the more dApps adopted. And it kind of became like the chicken egg problem solved itself with the creating a common denominator that all of these wallets could agree on created a standard that they could all build on top. And eventually, in 2022, we had like enterprise integrations. We had Stripe with their payments. We had Plaid, which connects like banks into dApps. 
And then we even had Twitter, like the hexagon that you see people verifying their NFT profile picture was supported by WallConnect. We even had Instagram, who unfortunately used to be in this slide, but then they had an internal discussion about not doing Web3 and they removed the NFT verification. But that was a good thing to celebrate. So what does WallConnect V2 bring? The first thing that we did was multi-chain. Not just chain agnostic, but multi-chain. And I think this is a clear distinction. Chain agnostic means supporting beyond EVM. So we not, all, not only support the VM, but we support multiple chain ecosystems, but also multi-chain. Ability for a wallet and a dApp to talk in multiple chains at the same time. That was very important in the V2 design. And then we went beyond just the connecting and signing, and we added communication. One of the things that people often forget is that in order for two devices to talk to each other, you essentially have a messaging network. And if you have a messaging network, you can send any type of message. So why constrain ourselves to just fix a simple interoperability problem and actually enable a more engaging and rich experience to communicate? <coughs> so Wallet Connect today, and as it always been, its main mission is to connect Web3. No matter what platform, what chain, what wallet, what app you use, it doesn't matter. Wallet Connect will be there in the middle to enable you to connect to anything, anywhere, and everywhere. And the next frontier is going from just connecting to communicating. That's once you actually have established this connection between a wallet and a dApp or two users on different chains, why are we not communicating? Why are we using other communication tools like email, Telegram, and Discord to communicate, or even not having our own push notification system? So that's, the, that's our job. Our job is not only to just create protocols, but also build SDKs that will enable this experience. And we currently support connection, like we did with WallConnect v1. And our SDKs for WallConnect v2 are Web3 wallets for wallets that uh, allows you to have a very seamless transaction signing experience. And we even have a very brand new feature, which allows you in a one-click login. Kind of emulate the experience that you see when you log in with Google or Facebook, but now log in with a wallet with a single click. No longer you have to connect and then sign a message or have multiple steps. You just log in, and it just, it just feels like magic. And then if you're building a dApp, you will use Web3 Model SDK, which will connect to all of the wallets that integrate with our Web3 Wallet SDK, and then allows you to have this multi-chain experience. So by design, you already have multi-chain capabilities with Web3 Model, which is different from the other SDKs that still assume one chain connected at any time. And of course, as any other dApp library, you will have like all of these rich features like a connect button, tracking which account you have, having network switching, seeing how much balance you have, and we're going to keep adding more features to those. But this is what I really want to talk about. Like This is the fancy new stuff, the cutting edge technology that we are really releasing. And we already have a lot of beta users in private testing. And we want to eventually release this, hopefully this July. We have push notifications and wallet-to-wallet -wallet chat. This is something that it's so normal in Web 2. But in Web 3, we kind of just didn't do it. We just thought it's already too hard to do the basic stuff. Why even bother with the more rich and engaging stuff? Where push notifications, I think it's quite critical. We, a lot of times we see people essentially connecting and forgetting. There's like this pattern where people play with Web3, they connect the wallet, and then they might just not be bothered to check it again. Or even you have the opposite side, which is you just want to keep track of your balances and you have to keep connecting. So there's like this anxiety associated with Web3. And the missing piece here, in my opinion, is push notifications. The user experience could be more similar to what iOS enabled on Android. Like when you have iOS and Android, every application that you download instantly tells you enable push notifications. But with dApps, you don't have this experience. You visit the dApp, you connect your wallet, and then you're kind of just like lost, and you don't know what's happening next. And this is especially important for more social or DAOs or communities that are being built because they need to have active participation. It's not just about you dropping a token and having some voting power, but if you can't actually be up to date what's happening, notifications can really drive that user engagement much better. And you know what? It can even fuel more use cases. Some use cases that we haven't even thought about. Like there's a company called Dispatch 
that has been essentially building these interactive experiences where you can essentially drive new actions from the users. And this could be driven by a push notification. And essentially, they could interact within the push notification without even visiting your DAB. And this is something very innovative that wasn't possible before without push notifications, unless they use something like email or SMS, which in, it's not directly connected to your wallet, and you don't want to associate your email or your phone number with your wallet. And wallet-to-wallet -wallet chat. This was actually quite simple, because once you actually have a messaging network where all of the wallets are connected to, and then you have all the dApps, then you could essentially create a wallet-to-wallet -wallet chat experience. The only thing that we actually had to introduce was identity verification. We essentially added the ability to generate delegate keys that it verifies your account, and then we can authenticate each message individually without asking your wallet constantly to verify each message. So once we actually added the identity verification into our messaging network, you can use like an ENS or any other naming system to resolve an address, and then you can message that person directly into their wallet. The only thing they need to do is verify their identity by sending a wallet message. And then they would become part of the network, and everyone can message each other. And I hope that in a future conference like Avalanche Summit 3, we can just share our Wallet, con wallet Connect chat identity and just start messaging instead of Telegram and Discord. But there's even more rich experience that we could be building. For example, someone could recreate a Venmo experience in the wallet chat paying and requesting, swapping. Uh, that NFT is pretty cool. Here's like some AVA tokens in exchange for that, or maybe customer support. I think that the hidden mission of Wall Connect is reducing anxiety. And when you visit the app, there's still a lot of anxiety. There's still a lot of friction. There's still a lot of learning curves. And now with the advent of AI, we could actually have chatbots. Imagine visiting your popular app and making it more clear that what are you going to do by having a little clipper? Remember Clipper, like from Microsoft Tools? Like, that would be a great experience, honestly. Like, Clipper could talk to you, and Clipper could guide you. Your transaction would fail, and Clipper would assure you that nothing you did was wrong. It was just something else, or maybe it was your problem. Like, having that customer support experience is something that is missing in Web3. And why is it missing? Because we didn't have a proper decentralized messaging network. And now we can actually have like multiple chatbots just navigating in our world. And then you could just have this support built in into dApps. I think this is just one of the few use cases that we can build with wallet to wallet chat. But to kickstart, we're going to use Web3 Inbox. So we built protocols and SDKs, but we want to bootstrap the usage of our Wallet Connect network with chat and push notifications. So with Web3 Inbox, we're creating an app and an SDK that allows you to communicate very easily. What do we offer? We offer both the SDK and app version. The app version will allow you to connect your wallet in web3inbox.com, which you can visit today to join the waitlist. And when you go to web3inbox.com, you'll have a very normal convenient chat interface, and also an inbox to receive push notifications. And this is essentially the same thing that SDK does. But what the SDK enables is this experience to be embedded into your wallet, reusing all of the capabilities that your wallet has directly into the SDK instead of instantiating it separately from the app. And the cool thing about this is that you have the security of your wallet uh, essentially allowing the connection to be in the Wallet Connect network directly rather than having to proxy to a different app. But because we don't want to wait until all of the wallets integrated, we're going to launch, hopefully in July, the Web3 Inbox app so that you can all use it. And then in Web3 Inbox SDK, slowly wallets will start adopting this once they realize that users have demand for this. How does it look? This is Web3 Inbox. In the left, you can see the chat conversation. You have two users sending tokens and NFTs, and they're conversating with their ENS names. And in the right, you will see a bunch of popular applications. Uh, right now, we only have like EVM uh, partners. Um, and basically, they have the ability to notify their users about the latest activity. In this simple interface, we essentially created a communication protocol that is built in the most important identity in Web3, your wallet. Your wallet should be the hub for all of your activity and also this access control for everything that you do. And therefore, you should be able to communicate it directly to you. It's your trust anchor in the Web3 world. 
It's something that you can rely on, and it's something that you know that it's yours. So why not have the inbox directly there? Why put it in Telegram or email or Discord? Have it directly in your wallet, and WebG Inbox is only the first client that will be built on top of the Wallet Connect network. I invite everyone to be building more clients, but WebG Inbox SDK is the starting point that allows us to kind of have like a first-hand experience of what it would look like for a WebG communication layer. So yeah, if you're just as excited about WebG Inbox as I am, please feel free to scan the QR code. You'll be able to verify your wallet, and then you will be added to the list. And then since we don't have WebG messaging today, you're also allowed to optionally add your email to get notified. But you can also follow us on Twitter. And if you're looking to build with our SDKs, maybe a great push notification experience or a wallet chat experience, or you want to put ChatGPT on the Wallet Connect network, reach us out at partnerships at WalletConnect.com. We have an amazing pilot partner program where we work very closely with our partners to have these SDKs battle tested before it hit production. And that would allow us to have wallets early on at launch, but also dApps. We want both dApps and wallets to participate in this pilot program. And that's it. That's the many layers of interoperability. And I thank you, everyone, for coming and letting me talk. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Time for questions? Test, 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 there we go. Yeah. Um, at what level do you think we, could, we can be at where, like normal people, to connect to the internet, where uh, we can apply to the blockchain sort of method as well? Because you know, normal people don't really care about like, how the, the, the back end works or the front end works. Um, and it's just really just, uh, just out of interest, like how far do you think we are uh, from that sort of area or, or, or that sort of uh, distance? Um, where we can onboard basically people that don't have any knowledge about blockchain at all? That's a great question. So well, I, uh, basically the question is about where we're going to get to the pivoting point where users who don't care about wallets or any of this complexity in Web3 will feel comfortable to be onboarded and not, not needing to understand. I think one of the differences is that sometimes people believe Wallet Connect is a wallet. And we're a middleware or an infrastructure project between wallets and apps. We're a communication layer. We enable connections and communication. We, we work very closely with our wallet partners. We incentivize them to have more innovation in the wallet space. And we all know the seed phrases and the hardware wallets, and that's essentially the status quo of wallets. But there's been a lot of innovation in the other end. For example, Argent is a very popular smart contract wallet that allows you to have a little bit more control over your account. So I would say that that falls under the line of like innovation in the account management. And we also have like Gnosis Safe, who is one of the most popular multi-sigs out there. And even the Ethereum Foundation has now uh, posted source code and audited um, for the account abstraction standard. And account abstraction is just a awful word for it. It should be called like just smart accounts. And even the offers of account abstraction say it. I think smart accounts will be a, a defining factor. But even then, like, we still have a little bit of the problem with key management solutions. So on the other end, we see a lot of key management solutions like Fireblocks, Magic, WebTreeOff, uh, Zengo. They're all working in multi-party computation. And that's essentially going to allow keys to be abstracted completely. So I guess you could say that like once we have account abstraction and key abstraction, we essentially will make the wallets disappear. When is that going to happen? I feel like multi-party computation is something that's been a little bit more mature. And we're seeing it maybe in the one to three year horizon. Account abstraction is very novel. And it's maturing fast. But I would say that's maybe three to five years.
you did more notification based stuff. What's your thinking around B2C communication? So that's a great question. So his question was about why are we focusing so much in peer-to-peer -peer and what about B2C communication from a business or adapt to an actual consumer? And that's something that actually came out of our pilot partner program. We work very closely with our partners and this came out so often that we're going to release uh, maybe in June an update that's going to introduce a more a coupled integration with businesses and the key difference was the identity verification having a wallet associated with a business makes it really hard because now multiple participants let's say you have like five support agents in a company controlling the same key that's very inconvenient so what we're actually going to do is add DNS verification using DIDs we're able to actually verify the domain in a decentralized way so that all clients can actually verify the same client and have multiple participants chat so that's coming up so that's some alpha that you just unveiled there <laughs> yeah. Well, the, there's a lot of layers here. So uh, how can we abstract essentially this transition period between like thinking single chain to multi-chain and perhaps a user could be in like a chain that they control and also view chains they don't, don't control. So this would essentially be that you go to adapt and you have almost like this wallet interface, right? That's a, that's a good question, actually. We haven't thought about this. Uh, we have kind of delegated the responsibility of the wallet to broaden the chain support and us essentially becoming a reflection of whatever the wallet supports. Uh, we haven't actually gotten into the point of exposing information that the wallet has not addressed or adopted. Um, I think this kind of comes with some certain problems because then essentially we then need to be almost like a wallet, you know, to some extent. And then the wallets themselves also have to add generic signing. So they need to sign for chains that they do not support. And this is one of the biggest problems with EVM. Uh, all of the wallets uh, precisely only uh, sign for chains that they support, but not for chains they don't support, even though the signing is exactly the same. And I've kind of tried to push wallets to do this, but they have been very protective of this. So I think with maybe with account abstraction we can do this because then you could deploy a smart account on the DAP side that is controlled by the other one and then with the account abstraction you can essentially sign for any chain. So maybe account abstraction is the pivoting point for this uh, but we currently don't have a solution for this. However, when it comes to multi-chain, uh, WallConnect is part of this uh, really great association that's called uh, Chain Agnostic Standards Alliance. And we essentially create uh, chains that are not for EVM or Solana or any other particular blockchain. We create standards for any chain. So if you go to uh, chainagnostic.org, you will see a compilation of standards that we work on together with many organizations like MetaMask, Ceramic, Spruce, Fission, and many others who have participated. And we address a lot of these issues, but the issue that you mentioned is a little layer up. But I think account abstraction might solve them. Well, I think that's all the time for me. Thanks a lot for your questions and giving me the time. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.